Hey guys, Legion here and welcome back to a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 speed build in my tropical park. And today I'm going to be building a habitat for the Brachiosaurus and the Gigantoraptor. The main focus of this build is going to be a cool new glitch or just maybe feature, a new, a new feature that I found out. And that's actually to make the Brachiosaurus drink over some kind of wall, which was possible in the first game in Jurassic World Evolution 1, uh, over one of the small fences. But many people have said that it's not possible any longer in Jurassic World Evolution 2. But there's actually a way to make that happen in Jurassic World Evolution 2 as well. And I figured that out, but I'm gonna tell you later just how to pull that off. And for that you're gonna have to stick around a little bit longer to the rest of the speed build. But first I'm gonna tell you about the planned park for Battle of the Builders that I was supposed to be dropping today instead of this video. Uh, this video itself is a bit, little bit late because I had a lot to do with school. But I hope it's not too late for you guys, I hope you're gonna be enjoying the new episode. But as I've said previously, I've planned to build on a new park and I've actually recorded uh, footage for two episodes for that already. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that uh, as a build series now on my channel because I decided that I'm just going to have to rush that park quite a lot. I'm going to have to put a lot of time into that to finish that park uh, with the level of detail that I'm building at right now. Also, I've been really enjoying building in that park and uh, that's why I don't want to rush it. And, I've, and I also want to uh, do it more episodes on it because I had to build a lot of a lot of things off screen and I don't want to rush out my videos and basically that's why instead of that I'm now going to be finishing my tropical park and sort of uh, doing sort of working on that and sort of changing some of the older areas and changing some of that uh, to make the park truly perfect because there are some areas in the park that I don't like uh, those are some that you haven't previously seen in any of the episodes but yeah I'm also going to do videos on that basically sort of pimp my park episodes and where I'm just going to be fixing some of the areas in my park and sort of changing some things. <laughs> I hope you're not disappointed or anything, but later, uh, after this is done, after uh, Battle of the Builders is done, probably in the new year, that's when I'm going to be dropping those episodes and where I'm actually going to start building on that park. But after all those channel news, now I'm going to get back into the actual build that I'm doing right now. And with that, of course, I'm going to start telling you how to do the glitch or feature that I found out how to do with the Brachiosaurus. Basically what you're gonna have to keep in mind is that dinosaurs now have these territories in the game and if something is not in their territory they basically don't know it, that it exists. So what you're gonna have to do for this glitch is use rocks in some kind of way as the barrier for the exhibit um, for the Brachiosaurus. The reason for that is that they don't recognize rocks as a barrier. That means that their uh, territory will go outside of their exhibit and that means that the water right next to the walls is going to be inside of their habitat, inside of their territory. And that basically means that they recognize that water is there and so they can actually walk there and start drinking over it. If you just use concrete uh, barriers or any kind of fence in the entire exhibit and then use those mortar walls that are used right here uh, and next to the water, uh, the brachy won't actually be able to drink over that. Just keep that in mind. So I hope you're going to be enjoying the glitch and using that in your own parks. I think it's a really cool idea. It adds an awesome highlight uh, to the park. And it's going to be just imagine being in a park and having that experience with sort of dinosaurs drinking like right next to you. The, just those massive uh, sauropods right there. That, that would really be awesome. But another awesome trick of mine that I've discovered uh, that I'm currently doing in the background is to build sauropod feeders because instead of just using those plants right there and they, them sort of looking a bit out of place because I don't really use them uh, anywhere else in the habitat, instead of just incorporating them, what I could just do, uh, instead I like to place them and just have sing and just remove the rest and just have singular though of those trees that the brackets eat from standing there. And then right inside of that I'm going to place one of the decorations which is one of the perches for the uh, aviary creatures. And if you place that inside of the tree, it actually sort of looks like some kind of giraffe feeder that you would see in a zoo. And I think that looks pretty cool. And that's probably something that would be built for sauropods instead of them just feeding on trees. I personally like the sauropod feeders in the first game. And that's why I'm sort of building something similar to that uh, right now. Also in this speed build, I'm not going to be fully finishing off all of the path work. Uh, actually, I'm not going to be doing any of that. Uh, I did some of that off screen later and you're going to see that uh, be finished in the cinematics but I didn't fully finish the path I didn't fully decorate it uh, that's basically because I want to sort of leave that uh, to the next speed build episode which there are probably going to be like one or two more speed build episodes uh, for this park basically I want to finish it off with some kind of big dinosaur maybe like the giganotosaurus I think that's going to be a good idea uh, just a big carnivore to finish off the whole park but yeah I'm probably going to build like two or three more exhibits uh, maybe even 
just one but i think like two or three more and then the park is going to be done but after that of course i'm just going to rework some of the old areas in the park and there's especially one exhibit uh, that you guys don't know of of course and uh, because i built that before i actually started youtube but i don't really like that exhibit so i'm for sure going to be reworking that in a future episode I decided to also put the Gigantoraptor in this habitat. Uh, that's just a weird uh, sort of dinosaur combo that I thought of uh, doing in uh, some kind of exhibit. I think the Gigantoraptor, of course, because it's new, that's probably why I put it in here. But I think it kind of fits with the sauropods. It's another big dinosaur, and I feel like they wouldn't, you know, be in. I think they could perfectly cohabitate uh, even in real life if that was even possible, you know, getting dinosaurs. Uh, but I think that those two species would be able to cohabitate the Gigantoraptor and Brachiosaurus. Basically because, you know, the Gigantoraptor wouldn't attack the Brachy and the Brachy would neither attack the Gigantoraptor. Um, but yeah, and also there are quite a few, I think, cool dinosaur combinations that I've never really seen done before. Just like maybe the Dinochirus and Uranosaurus in one of my previous speed builds. So maybe an idea I've had is to do maybe like a little fun video where I just show off some of my favorite dinosaur combinations. And then in the comments you can also put some of your favorite dinosaur combinations that maybe aren't as common to see in other people's builds. Also I like building sort of little uh, areas of nature of some trees, some bushes, so basically surrounded by rocks, sort of separating the exhibit. Uh, that's what I like doing a lot, especially with sauropods. I think that makes a lot of sense, sort of protecting those trees uh, where they wouldn't be trampling on them. And also uh, for the Gigantoraptor basically to go help them with the Brachiosaurus that uh, doesn't have any water inside of the exhibit. I put a little bit of water uh, somewhere else in the exhibit and then surrounded most of it with rocks. Basically so only a smaller species would be able to fit through there and actually drink from that water. So only the Gigantoraptors are going to be using that water and the Brachiosaurus will, also, uh, will always drink outside of the exhibit. But since we're now sort of coming to the end of the whole speed build, uh, I just kind of want to tell you how I um, th what I'm thinking of the exhibit. And I personally kind of like how it turned out. I think it's pretty cool. Um, on one side, you have basically towers on uh, two sides of the exhibit, uh, the viewing towers. And on one of them, you have uh, these feeders that I've previously mentioned. I think that's quite cool, having sort of uh, more on the eye level of the guests looking at them. And I think it's a quite cool exhibit. Instead of going for a really forested exhibit, I decided to go for a more um, sort of open landscape uh, for the Brachiosaurus. Because, you know, they're very big animals and there wouldn't probably be a lot of things growing there where they're walking, you know. But yeah. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the speed build. I hope you enjoyed what I built. And I hope you're gonna, of course, have fun watching the cinematics at the end. Um, but anyways, this episode took a little bit longer, of course, because of school. And also because I had to decide what I'm gonna do, if I'm gonna continue this park, if I'm gonna continue the other park. And now, of course, I just did decide to continue this park. But yeah, leave a like on the video, comment, uh, subscribe, and share the video. And I hope you guys are gonna enjoy the next video. Uh, stay tuned for that. And also, have a great rest of your day, of course. Bye-bye.